Hello everyone and welcome back to Shanka Show, the place we can all learn something new about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи, в эфире программа Ушанка Show. Just in case if you're new to my channel, my name is Sergei Sputnikov, although some people prefer to call me John Wayne Cheeseburger, and back in 1971 I was born in the USSR. And today's video is the final episode about Soviet emergency services. So every Soviet payphone had a small placard attached to the phone, like you see at this picture with Comrade Sergei, and it had information about emergency phone calls, which you could do for free. Otherwise, local phone call will cost you two kopecks, and you could not call long distance out of town from the pay phones in the Soviet Union. You had to go to the special postal office that provided calls between the cities. So if the fire burning, fire burning on a dance floor, you dial 01 and you call Pajarniki, the firefighters. If man in masks breaking in your house, who are you gonna call? Militia. You dial 02 and you call Militia, Soviet police. And in case if you just can't unbreak your heart, or you just had too much Fanta like I did, you dial 03 and you call Soviet ambulance, Скорая медицинская помощь. Speedy medical help. And looking at this metal placard, we see that there's one more phone number we could dial, 04, and it's called Служба Газа. So that's natural gas service. And of course, every Soviet citizen could use help dialing 01 if they had fire, dial 02 if there's a robbery going on, dial 03 if there's a health issues. 04, you only dial if you do have natural gas in your apartment or in your house. Otherwise, there is no need of this service. So, official name of this service was Avarinaya Gazavaya Služba, Emergency Gas Service. But I also stumbled on this photo with the famous UAZ Buhanka van has a just more simple message. Avarinaya Gaz, Emergency Gas. Gas. This is more like modern days a safety sign will answer the question that some of viewers ask uh, what was added to the natural gas in the Soviet Union. So it says if you smell gas, and we know natural gas has no smell, but of course they added, they call them odorants, uh, special chemicals. Our gas <laughs> uh, smelled like rotten eggs. So it was pretty obvious smell and it says of course if you smell gas then you need immediately close uh, the valves open windows and call emergency service 04 in the modern days looks like you can dial 0104 but you need to be outside the building or the room which has gas and it says do not use cell phones i said it's a modern day sign uh, don't unplug or plug in electrical devices and don't smoke Duh. In this video also try to reply to this comment. Could you please do a video on the very different way electrical, well we're going to talk about gas distribution is supplied in Russia and Ukraine and Soviet Union before that. Why they have those ugly yellow gas pipes above the ground? Why they use concrete power poles? Why gas and electric meters and living rooms and kitchen indoors? It's a longer question, but right now we're going to concentrate on gas. Well, similarly to the United States, I'm not sure about Western Europe, natural gas was always provided in the large cities and, you know, pretty big towns. And out of the country, there was no gas available, period. People always used firewood uh, to cook and stay warm. Even in modern day Russia, which is one of the largest exporters of natural gas in the world, or maybe is the largest, Around 29% of Russian people out in the country still use firewood or coal to heat their places in the winter. Some of you may remember this video. So my mom who moved back to her uh, village that she grew up in, uh, she still uses the wood brick stove to cook and heat her house. Although she still, I got her a small electric uh, stove too to cook, but she prefers to cook also in a big stove. It's way more delicious and in the winter. That's the only way she can stay warm is burning wood and that uh, pitch. Some Soviet villagers who could afford it had gas stoves and propane tanks, as you see in this picture, and they were placed right inside of the house, right next to each other, which is super duper not safe. And still, I remember in the winter, they still will cook in the wood brick and stove because you still have to burn wood to stay warm. And they use the stoves mostly in the summer cooking when 
you know you may don't want to burn wood in your big brick stove because it's already hot and now let's talk about those ugly yellow uh, pipes that provided natural gas to homes in the big cities like moscow kiev they were buried underground it only along the buildings they won't stall it outside and then of course they go inside into apartments but we didn't have them like everywhere like you see in small villages or towns and that's pretty much the only size of the gas tank they had available they had smaller ones but no bigger so it's not big enough to heat all your house if you'd like to install like a gas fired uh, furnace i don't know if they ever had those and i don't understand why they never designed systems similar to what they have here in the united states probably in canada when you have a large propane tank sitting outside and it provides enough gas to keep your house warm in the winter so instead of creating a network of producing storing and distributing propane like it's done in the united states soviet government remember central plant economy only in the late 60s early 70s so we're talking what is that like 60 years after the soviet union was created decided to start so-called massive gasification so it's like a widespread gasification with natural gas of uh, small villages and towns and of course since the expense to lay the pipe was coming out of the government's pocket they decided to go the cheapest route possible and it's definitely way cheaper to run pipes above ground than digging trenches for miles or kilometers and kilometers and of course another problem you already have established infrastructure in the villages or small towns so digging destroying blacktop you know uh, digging trenches uh, digging across roads so they decided just who cares it's ugly people would prefer to have natural gas in their home to stay warm and watch look at the ugly pipes than have no gas at all and this is a classic example so it looks kind of like a nice neighborhood at least further out because there's a dirt road in front so even if there is a road they're just going to run pipes high enough for the trucks and cars to pass under and this is pretty much <laughs> what they see out of their windows every day and this is my favorite photo they didn't paint pipes yellow yet but look right across the walkway there is a pipe in soviet russia pipe lays you and i also read another explanation that above ground gas pipes are easier to inspect for damage and corrosion so i guess another problem quality of pipes weren't that good so for visual inspection definitely it's easier to find leaks and uh, do repairs so here's an example of lucky villagers that finally got natural gas into their ancient log cabin and it definitely doesn't look that attractive log cabin with the bright yellow pipes and a gas meter and you know what could be more ugly than ugly yellow gas supply lines that installed above ground ugly poorly insulated hot water supplies lines like you see at this photo never mind the fire and now let's talk about gas and really quickly about electric meters there was another question why they're installed inside of living room and kitchens <laughs> so electric meters in apartment buildings usually installed not in the actual apartment but in the hallway this way you can still reset the breaker and the person who verifies the readings can have access to it electric meters were installed inside of the only like homes houses like my grandparents they had electric meter inside and the reason why it's indoors is because we didn't have actually distribution panels like they have here in america so if you trip we call it vibula propku you don't want to go outside to reset your breaker so the meter and the breaker was on the same unit indoors so for the convenience and it's just 220 no like real distribution <laughs> just one line goes everywhere so that's why electric meters in houses were inside situation was gadget meters even more interesting guess what in the soviet union we did not have gas meters I'm dead serious it was just natural gas flowing without any measurement into your apartment and you can really burn gas day and night cook or whatever and you're gonna still pay the same amount of money and it was based on how many people occupied the apartment so they knew uh, remember prapiska 
how many people live in this specific apartment and based on the amount of people there will be uh, just fixed amount of for the natural gas and only after soviet union collapsed and everything became capitalist suddenly people started installing the gas meters and the reason for it because now gas company only knows how much gas was uh, consumed by the whole building so they just divided by amount of apartments and bring the bill so suddenly you could be paying for someone who's maybe cooking pies like a business and that's what my mom actually did in the early 90s she was uh, making extra money by cooking uh, pies like you know with cabbage or with meat and selling them so then suddenly people are like well what about if I install my own meter? Then the company says, yeah, you can install the meter. Then you pay only for what you consume. And everyone started installing gas meters as, as, as well as a hot water meters and cold water meters. Because now no one wants to pay for everyone else. Before that, we also had no water meters as well. And the way the gas lines ran in apartment buildings is the only way you can attach the meter is actually in the kitchen because that's what the pipe is and then just have a little line that you install the meter and then you have a line that goes to your uh, stove so that's why it's right in the kitchen so that's what i have in my apartment in kiev and now let's go back in the beginning and talk about dial in 04 in case of gas emergencies which usually probably gas fire and uh, how often people had to do that during the soviet days it's kind of interesting but i don't recall a single fire or a single gas emergency in my 20 years living in the soviet union i have no doubt those things did happen because if you have natural gas in your apartment or house and it has no meter definitely would probably be some issues with explosions or fires but since the soviet government kept tight lead on any news like that there was never any information on tv radio newspaper about you know gas explosion apartment buildings we had this kind of false uh, sense of security because we never heard of it. And when I was searching Google for natural gas fires in, you know, Russia or Soviet Union, Ukraine, everything comes up like modern days. So now they report on it, there's a photos. And I would just guess, it's my guess, that it happens more often now than during the Soviet days because infrastructure got older. Many of these apartment buildings, they had a... 50 year lifespan after that it's supposed to be destroyed or remodeled so remodeling never happened so now those pipes are getting worse there's a corrosion then of course people installing gas meters so now we have more uh, holes cut in the gas pipes so i assume it's my just educated educated guess that right now situation is way worse of his natural gas fires and explosions that used to be during the Soviet days. And before I wrap up this video, I want to show you this funny diagram. So I was researching about how many homes currently got natural gas in modern day Russia. And there was cute comparison on one of Russian propaganda site, and it claims that Russia has higher level of gasification than the United States. 70% in Russia versus 50% United States. So I'll let you uh, think about it and write in the comment section what you think. Well, my friends, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something new. As always, please don't forget to like this video. I always like to read your comments. So please uh, comment below and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Trash up first. Я сделал видео, чтобы женка бачила. Подружку. Ого, да.
Вот и барашка напекла. Ну, какие уже тут не пекла. Заборешь там и утром, можно и вечером. Ням-ням. Mm -hmm.